the air? Do I have everybody's attention now? Do I have everybody's attention now? John, I got you. John, I Do I have everybody's Sunday attention night. now? He put them cameras on me, then you must be willing To get that heart touched, it's a must-see feeling The news ain't good, then it must be villain So I say it's tag grounded, I don't trust these feelings Spread across your nose, and I'm on your air Highest next on the cloud, am I in the air? Sunday night's prime time, I flex my better Voltron transform to DX Don Mega and off-scene, you probably think I'm nice Cause I flow like a stream to your wireless device And the smoke full of steam on any given night, I'll show up like a piece of any given slice. Uh, and for the latest and what is best about I, tune in and tune the rest out, Don. You gotta tell them, am I in the clear? Is this thing gone? Am I on the air? On the air. everybody welcome back to another brand new edition of am i on the air i'm your host don mega and i welcome you to the show we are broadcasting live from the red dragons radio studios here in lovely tucson arizona on this monday may the 25th it's memorial day ladies and gentlemen look at this a very special memorial day episode of am i on the air even though it's a holiday even though most of you are off work I still had to work today, and I'm still bringing you a new edition of the podcast, so that shows you how hard I work for all of y'all, <laughs> all right? It is season 20, it's episode 20 in 2020, and tonight's show is titled The Mega Cut. So I welcome you once again, I got a lot of stuff to break down for y'all, including some super exciting news that just broke the other day. Um, and we'll get to that in just a second. I'm going to jump right in with a new review for the weekend and this is the lovebirds that's right the lovebirds is a new romantic comedy starring kumal nanjiani and Issa ray this movie was supposed to come out a couple weeks ago it was supposed to come out i believe the same day uh, black widow was coming out on may 3rd it was going to kick off our summer movie season, right? We were going to get Black Widow for the action fans, and we were going to get the Lovebirds for some people that just wanted to have some good laughs, right? Unfortunately, we're still in the middle of this damn pandemic, right? And the movie theater shut down, and all the movies from May and June got pushed back. A lot of movies even still yet to come out months from now are already being pushed back. So, the Lovebirds was one of those ones that got pushed back indefinitely. And then... Our heroes, Netflix, came into the picture. That's right, Netflix came in. They bought the picture. They bought the rights. They swooped it up, and they released it to the world this past Friday night on May 22nd. So thank you, Netflix, because you allowed me to watch a new movie that I had all intentions to see in the theater. And now I got to watch it from the comfortable living room and uh, my couch with some popcorn. It was all good, man. It was really, really good. So let's talk about The Lovebirds. This movie, I love the trailer to this movie. So I was down from day one to go see this. I'm a big fan of Kamal. I just think he's hilarious, especially in his deliveries. I really enjoyed him with Batista last year in Stuber. And I was just really looking forward to this. The, the trailer had me dying. Um, I'm a little mixed on my overall emotions on the film because... I do feel like this is one of those movies that a lot of the real funny parts were in the trailer. So that's a little disappointing. I don't want to grease on my face. <laughs> uh, what's it going to do, shit on me? You know, just different lines, different punch lines, different segments of the film were played out in the trailer. And so it's unfortunate because some of those are, some of those are the biggest laughs. Now on the other side of it too, if you ever saw the movie Date Night, which came out probably... Ugh, 10 to 15 years ago with Steve Carell and Tina Fey, Mark Wahlberg. I love Date Night. That movie is so good. This movie is basically Date Night. 100%. <laughs> the way that it plays out, the little pieces in the background, the way it all comes together, this is Date Night. Full and full. Now, I'm not going to let that ruin this movie for me. 
because at the end of the day, it really is all about how do you feel, right? Uh, if you haven't seen the trailer and you don't know what movie I'm talking about, basically it's about this couple, Kumal and Issa. They're a couple they've been dating for several years, um, and they end up hitting a bicyclist um, one day while they're driving to a party. And right after they hit him, a guy jumps in the car and says that he's an undercover police officer and he needs to commandeer the vehicle. They go chasing after the guy on the bike, and the guy ends up hitting him. And running him over multiple times And then walking away And uh, Kamal, Nanjiani, and Issa Rae Are left basically With this dead body So they kind of go on the run And they're trying to figure it out um, You know, what really happened What was this all about Before um, the cops get to them So that's the whole thing there Is they need to make sure that they don't get arrested For this murder that they didn't do so, um, and of course, in between all that, that's where the hilarity ensues as everything kind of goes forward from there. So, uh, the chemistry is really good between our leads. They're super funny. Um, the movie's really funny. It's just, it's just in that okay kind of level. Um, at the end of the day, like I said, a lot of the big laughs are the stuff you've seen in the trailer. And then the other stuff are just like, okay, kind of laughs. So, you know what though? It makes it due to the fact I feel like if I went to the theater to see this one, I might have walked away a little disappointed. But watching it at home on Netflix, you know, not really spending any money, I ended up walking away going, that was pretty good. Did it change my life? No. Was it the best movie I've seen this year? No. But I laughed and I felt like it wasn't a waste of my time. <laughs> so I hope that helps you kind of understand where this movie kind of falls. Um, if you got, you know, an hour and a half to kill and you like kind of like these kind of date movie ish kind of films, I think you'll enjoy it. So check it out. I would give it three out of five stars. That's where I'm at with the lovebirds that you can now stream on Netflix. Okay. So I want to jump right into the big news. I'm not going to do it. Usually I read news in chronological order, but tonight I have to jump right into it. Tonight's show title is called The Mega Cut. And that's because you probably know where I'm going if you're into the news of the world and entertainment news like I bring to you every single week. The big rumor for the last couple years has been release the Snyder Cut, right? The Zack Snyder Cut of Justice League. If you know anything about the history of the Justice League movie that came out in 2017... You all know that Zack Snyder directed this movie And then right after Principal Photography wrapped His daughter unfortunately committed suicide And he had to drop out of finishing the picture Warner Brothers did not want to delay the movie um, And they went ahead and they moved forward And they brought in Joss Whedon Who typically is a great director He directed Avengers and Avengers Age of Ultron Among other films And they brought him in to finish the movie but they trimmed the hell out of the film um, They wanted to keep it under two hours and They did a bunch of reshoots And they added a bunch of extra stuff So the movie, the Justice League movie That you saw in 2017 Is not the real Justice League movie Now for the last couple years This hashtag has grown Hashtag release the Snyder Cut Zack Snyder who is very very big on the Vero Social media site um, Continued to Leak pictures and deleted scenes and all this kind of stuff from what his cut was, and he used to and he used to say, you know, like yeah, my cut, my cut is out there. I have a cut of the film, but who knows if if it'll ever see the light of day. And then we had people like Jason Momoa, who of course is Aquaman, and we had Ray Fisher who plays Cyborg. These people have come out and said, oh, I've seen it and it's awesome, and you guys need to see it, and hopefully one day we'll see it. And then it's just continued The hashtag has continued And there's been a lot of rumors But nothing of nothing much has really concrete happened Until last week That's right, Zack Snyder was doing a watch-along for Man of Steel And at the end of the film um, He even had a special guest Mr. Henry Cavill, our Superman Popped up for the Man of Steel watch-along And then he did a Q&A at the end and of course one of the questions came up Are you ever going to release the Snyder Cut To which he responded It's happening and it's coming 
and the official word broke that on the brand new HBO Max streaming service next year in 2021, HBO Max will debut Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, I could not be more happier. I was over the moon. This news was fantastic. It was finally real. We saw posters. We started to read information about it. HBO Max is going to fund 20 to $30 million to Zack Snyder to finish the film. Because, of course, he says he's done, like the movie's done and the movie has been planned out and he knows what he needs to do, but some of the special effects are not completed. So he needs some more money to complete the project so it actually looks decent. And think of it like a marketing cost, right? This doesn't have to go back into theaters. They give him 20 to 30 million. It boosts subscribers because people are going to subscribe to see this legendary cut for better or for worse. And the money will go to good need um, to finish this film, to finish his version of this film. And man, the overall support. The internet blew up. The internet broke for the next couple of days with people stoked and excited that we were going to see Zack Snyder's vision of Justice League. His full, full vision. Um, the cast has been supportive. Ben Affleck has tweeted. Henry Cavill's tweeted. Gal Gadot. Um, Ray Fisher. Jason Momoa. Everybody is super excited that we're finally getting the Snyder cut of this movie. Now, they're still working on if... This is going to be a big, masterful, four-hour director's cut. Or what HBO Max might actually do as well is take the four hours, break it up into six limited series mini episodes, and then it'll go on the network, you know, for over, for a month and a half, where each week, each Friday, you come to the network and you stream chapter one, chapter two, so forth, of the new Justice League film. So... I don't know which way it's going to land yet. If it was up to me, I think I just want the big four-hour cut. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I've never been a fan of really taking a movie and breaking it into like a miniseries. I know Quinn Tarantino just did this for The Hateful Eight on Netflix. And I just, I don't know about watching it like a show. If they decide to do it that way, that's fine. I'll watch it. (laughs) And I have a feeling they're going to do it that way just to kind of... Do something different than the theatrical version, right? We already have a movie of Justice League. Why don't we do this limited series of the Zack Snyder version? So I have a feeling they're going to go that route. But if it was up to me, I would take the big six hour or the big four hour cut. Um, supposedly, they're not going to do any reshoots. Supposedly, all the all the film, all the everything they needed to shoot is shot. But what he is going to do is he's going to get some of the cast and crew back. To record additional dialogue So they might re-record some dialogue That they need um, Which everybody seems to be down for That should be pretty easy And then of course like I said they're working on the special effects So 20 to 30 mil to get this thing Polished and done So it is official It is coming next year in 2021 We don't know exactly what date yet We just know 2021 on the brand new HBO Max Streaming service Which just happens to launch on Wednesday That's right on Wednesday May 27th That new streaming service will launch and it's going to be time to go. Uh, You can get HBO Max for $14.99 a month. And yes, it does include HBO. So HBO is about $15 a month. So if you're subscribed to HBO Solo, I think it's time to dump it. And then you can get it with HBO Max. If you subscribe, I think today might be the last day. If you you subscribe early, you can actually get it for $11.99 for the first year instead of $15. So just something... Something to think about Because that's what I've already done uh, And you get instant access to HBO Now as well So going back to the Snyder Cut I'm so excited You know, I'm actually a fan of the theatrical version I just, I love the DC Universe If you've listened to me for any amount of time You know Man of Steel is one of my all time favorite films I love Batman v Superman I love Wonder Woman I love Aquaman I love Suicide Squad I love, <clears throat> I love all these movies And when Justice League came out I know that There was problems I know that this is a mishmash of a film That has some Zack Snyder stuff It has some Joss Whedon stuff But at the end of the day man I was seeing the Justice League on the screen for the first time I was seeing Superman, Flash, Aquaman, Cyborg Wonder Woman, Batman All together fighting side by side For the first time ever on film So 
I don't know man To me that was enough For me to just love that movie But in the back of my mind I always wanted to see Zack Snyder's version Because I do like the universe That he set up I like the seeds that were planted in Man of Steel That led into Batman v Superman That would have led into this Justice League movie Hinting towards Darkseid And so much more like Green Lanterns And uh, Martian Manhunter And all kinds of cool stuff that we didn't get you know, we got no dark side in the Justice League movie, which why not? We had Steppenwolf, we had somebody coming, you know, from the new gods that we know it was all about dark side. You know, if you saw Batman v Superman and you saw the nightmare thing, you saw it was dark side. So it just it bugged me that they tried to move away from so much stuff. Um and I'm just so happy to finally get back what we needed, what we was intended to be. So I I love Zack's vision I love his vision for this franchise And I know some people don't But I feel like, you know I want to see what the original thought was Going into this massive arch of a film um, Before somebody messed with it And I can't wait to see the differences Now some people have asked like, Do you think they'll keep anything from Whedon? I don't Because this isn't Whedon's film This is Zack Snyder's Justice League Why would he leave anything in that Joss Whedon did? Right, I don't think any of the reshoots People have brought up the whole mustache thing With Henry Cavill, all that stuff I don't think any of that's going to be in the film Because Zack did not shoot that stuff So um, They're saying that the cast Will not come back and reshoot anything That that's not a part of the agreement But In the back of my mind, I'm like Everybody's really cool with Zack And they want to see his vision come to fruition The best way so if I think if Zach picks up the phone and says Could you just maybe do something for me real quick That these guys might be willing to do something Out of the kindness of their hearts So I'm not going to put it past that there might be some reshoots But as of right now They're saying no reshoots just audio dialogue Being re-recorded So um, we'll see man I, I could talk about this all day I've even thought about bringing the crew together And doing a am I still on the air Just because I am so geeked out And stoked about this news so um, I'm sure maybe we'll discuss or talk about it at a deeper length later But for right now, just know it's coming HBO Max 2021, Zack Snyder's Justice League, baby Now, of course, now that that news has broken out In the last couple of days, people have started to reach out to other filmmakers And one of them especially is David Ayer David Ayer directed The Suicide Squad Now, there's been a ton of rumors for the past several years since Suicide Squad came out that that version of the film that we saw was not David Ayer's version That he filmed the movie and then they turned it over to some kind of trailer studio Who re-edited it and took out a bunch of stuff And then that was the version that was released to theaters And it wasn't what David Ayer intended it to be Supposedly there was a ton more footage with Joker that was deleted um, Storyline points that were deleted So... What we got was not the real Suicide Squad So now, now that we know we're getting the Snyder Cut of Justice League A lot of people are saying, hey, what about the air cut of Suicide Squad Which he did reply to a fan over the weekend that said, you know, that hey, it's something to think about He says his cut would be very easy to do Because he's got the whole thing already kind of put together And then some of it's just deleted scenes that he has to put back into the film And just re-edit it, but he said he wouldn't really need to it wouldn't cost much It wouldn't really take much uh, And that if they wanted to do it and put it together He could probably do it pretty easily Because um, he flat out says in this tweet That the, the the version you saw in theaters Was not the version he that he filmed And that the mm-hmm. film that he wanted to put out So again It's up to the fans I guess right? If the fans start tweeting Release the air cut <laughs> You know of Suicide Squad Then maybe you know HBO Max 2022 we can get the Suicide Squad Version you know you never You never never know um, But I'd be down man I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Suicide Squad but I would love to see what David Ayer Intended it to be from the beginning Especially with a lot more Joker And Harley I think that would have been great So there's my DC news There's my HBO Max plug They should give me a free subscription for this uh, For how much love we're showing them over here But that's that's the big breaking news I wanted to jump right into it To just get us kicked off on today's episode Alright, so let's switch gears Let's get on over to the news of the last week Now, kind of keeping in the DC vein Right after we recorded last week's episode News dropped that Ruby Rose has exited the CW's Batwoman show before season 2 So season 2 has already been greenlit They're coming back for season 2 on Batwoman 
Uh, Ruby Rose of course did the whole first season She is Batwoman And now they're saying she left That she has quit um, it seems to be amicable on both sides. Um, she says that you know she appreciates everything and everyone, but that she needs to move on. And of course, the cast and crew are all saying, "Hey, we appreciate her, but it's time we move on." And it looks like they will recast the role. Um, as the couple days went by, past that news kind of breaking, the rumor, and I'll hint that once again that it is a rumor, but that the rumor of the reason why she left. Is just because of the long hours and the grueling schedule Because she's the lead of the show And when I hear that I pretty much understand where it's coming from Because if you think about it Ruby Rose has not really led anything, right? She was on Orange is the New Black She was a side character only in a couple episodes She was a side character in John Wick She was a side character in Triple X She was a side character... Um, in the Meg, you know, she's always a side character, so I'm sure that she films in very short spurts, and that's it. But being on Batwoman and actually being the lead of the show, she was working 15 hour days, six days a week, and it just really burnt her out real fast. And I think that's why she wanted to go. And it makes sense to me. It really, really does because I think when somebody, you know, she didn't know what to expect, and she stepped into it and was like, "Whoa, this just ain't for me." And that just happens sometimes, you know So wish her the best of luck I'm anxious to see who they're going to recast her with Uh, They say they are going to be looking for a genuine, you know, lesbian Somebody in the LGBTQ community, you know, to really properly replace that role Um, So we will see who ends up stepping into it This is the first time in our Arrowverse that we've had a main character step away and get recast So let's see what happens there Toy Story 4's Justin Cooley is set to write and direct uh, Malamander for Sony Pictures Yorgos Lanthimos is reuniting with the favorite scribe for a new Hawkline monster movie Freeform has officially renewed Everything's Gonna Be Okay And Motherland Fort Salem for new seasons Tom Hanks, his new movie uh, Greyhound it's a World War II movie called Greyhound It was set to come out in theaters But you know what, they have decided to skip it And once again a streaming company has bought the rights And this time it will go to Apple TV Plus So Apple TV Plus will have the Tom Hanks Greyhound film Streaming exclusively on their app Bypassing the movie theater So no date has been given yet for when it will come out Blumhouse is adapting a Dateline story Plus, they've just signed Jamie Lee Curtis to a new first look deal So they're looking to be in the Jamie Lee Curtis uh, market for quite some time We have the trailer for The Last Days of American Crime Starring Edgar Ramirez that you can check out Holly Berry is set to lead the new movie Moonfall for director Roland Emmerich So great addition there, love me some Holly Berry Timothy Oliphant's The Mandalorian character might have been revealed It sounds like he's playing kind of a scrapper Uh, Who you might actually even see wearing the Boba Fett outfit But he is not playing Boba Fett That, Like I said, he's a scrapper that pretty much he finds the Boba uh, armor from the pit uh, From Return of the Jedi that that Boba Fett fell into So um, he's got, you know, just kind of an Easter eggy kind of thing But I like the sound of it and I'm still super stoked for Timothy Oliphant being in The Mandalorian Apple TV Plus has won the rights to a new documentary series From the guys who put together McMillions Which I really, really liked The Blacksmith is getting adapted That's right, Nick Jonas and Lawrence Fishburne Are set to star in the AGC Studios adaptation Um, So, very interesting The Blacksmith, that sounds like a really cool project Fox has renewed The Resident And Last Man Standing for new seasons So congratulations there We have the trailer uh, for The Old Guard Which is the new Charlize Theron Netflix action movie That a normal boy Friggins is waiting for Uh, Trolls World Tour has been announced for digital and Blu-ray That's right, it'll be released on digital in June And then it'll hit Blu-ray in July So that's one that we can finally get our hands on Because you can only rent it right now digitally Marvel Studios' Shang-Chi film has just reportedly cast Fala Chen in a key role We have your full list of HBO Max movies that are available on launch day So check that out, remember that launches on Wednesday Infamous, we have the new trailer for Infamous starring Bella Thorne Netflix's Eurovision 
is coming very soon. We got a new article up with uh, some pictures of some over the top performances and some photos from the movie uh, starring Will Ferrell and Rachel McAdams. It looks awesome. I can't wait for this thing. Steve Carell leads the new Space Force trailer, so you can check out that trailer. And the new show will debut. Um, God, it might have actually. Let me check something here. I thought it debuted on Friday, but it might have actually debuted early. Um, no, it is Friday. May 29th is when um, Space Force will hit Netflix. So I'm looking really forward to this, man. I love Steve Carell, and this just looks hilarious. So Space Force hitting Netflix. I didn't even watch this new trailer because I was like, hey, at this point, I just want to watch the show and laugh my ass off. It hits Netflix on Friday. Mindy Kaling and Dan Gore are writing Legally Blonde 3, so congratulations there. The Academy is considering postponing the 2021 Oscars. No shocker there. We don't have no damn movies to watch. Michael Bay is producing a pandemic thriller, which is supposedly supposed to start shooting in five weeks. That's right. Look at that. A pandemic thriller called Songbird. Um, But yeah, he's not directing it. He's just producing it. So calm down, everybody. Uh, The show Outmatched has been canceled over on Fox after one season. This is the new Jason Biggs show. I gave it one episode and it was so bad I had to move along. So not shocked to see it canceled. Uh, CBS has unveiled its schedule um, with some shows returning, some other shows being held out for mid-season. A lot of shifts from our major networks on how they're going to do these new seasons just because of the delay in filming because of coronavirus. Coronavirus! Um, So here's some of the big kind of key points here. Um, The big moves. Although CBS is not saying exactly when their new season will launch, the mere fact that its very stable new schedule is being billed as a fall lineup suggests executives have somewhat of an optimistic timetable in mind for restarting production. The long-delayed new season of The Amazing Race will follow Survivor on Wednesdays, bumping the show SWAT to mid-season, which really pisses me off because I love SWAT, and now i got to wait till mid-season to get this thing back? I feel like most of my shows are mid-season at this point. Chuck Lore has a new sitcom called Be Positive that has scored the Thursday post-Young Sheldon perch, sending the unicorn to 9.30. The Queen Latifah headline Equalizer reboot will follow 60 Minutes on Sundays, replacing the canceled God Friended Me show. The new Silence of the Lambs prequel uh, sequel series called Clarice is also being held for mid-season. So as of right now, the fall schedule has on Mondays, The Neighborhood, Bob Hart's Abishola, All Rise, and Bull. On Tuesday, NCIS, FBI, and FBI Most Wanted. Wednesdays, Survivor, The Amazing Race, and SEAL Team. Thursday, Young Sheldon, Be Positive, Mom, The Unicorn, and Evil. And Fridays, MacGyver, Magnum P.I., and Blue Bloods. Um, And then on Sundays will be 60 Minutes, The Equalizer, NCIS Los Angeles, and NCIS New Orleans. So there is your big rundown on CBS so far. Um, the show Good Trouble and the show Gronish um, have their returns already pushed until 2021. So heads up there. Marlon Wayans and Neil H. Moritz are teaming for a new romantic buddy action comedy called Ride or Die. I'll definitely check that out. Um, you can watch a teaser for Chuck Lorre's new CBS comedy Be Positive and the sizzle reels for the Equalizer reboot and Clarice right now if you check out our social media. Am I on the air? Dot com or go to uh, twitter.com slash am I on the air or Facebook to find all your needs there. Um, HBO is developing a series adaptation of Martiana Majak's Queens. That's right. Uh, the limited series based on the playwright. Hidden Series 2 Acorn TV and BBC's addictive crime noir thriller is returning. Good, Bad, and Undead is a new movie with Peter Dinklage and Jason Momoa. It's going to be an action-adventure film, and that's what they're putting together there. Blumhouse has tapped Issa Lopez to adapt Our Lady of Tears. David Robert Mitchell is set to direct Heroes and Villains for MGM. Sony is working on a secret female-centric Marvel movie with S.J. Clarkson. Uh, known I know S.J. Clarkson mainly from doing Jessica Jones on Netflix So she's going to be working on this female show for Sony So we'll see what kind of characters they come up with that in the Marvel Universe 
Muppets Now is set to premiere on July 31st on Disney Plus. Steven Soderbergh reveals that he's written Sex, Lies, and Videotape, the sequel. Ooh, after all these years. Uh, Dan Mancini is teasing that Chucky will have a different goal in the new television series that they're working on. Jennifer Goodwin is set to join Eliza Coop in the new comedy pilot called Star. Um, I'm sorry, not Star. I'm mixing another article up. Jennifer Goodwin is set to join Eliza Coop in a new comedy pilot called Pivoting, which is going to be on Fox. The Bold and the Beautiful's two season renewal is official over on CBS. Skeet Ulrich explains that he's leaving Riverdale because, quote unquote, I got bored creativity. Um, so I get it. It's what happens, man, especially when you're a character like that. Um, it's time to move along. You can check out some first look photos of the new CBS All Access show, The Stand, based on uh, Stephen King's books, of course. You can see Alexander Skarsgård as Randall Flagg, Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, is Mother Abigail and a whole bunch more So check that out from the new viral miniseries that's coming The critically acclaimed Britain comedy Breeders Starring Martin Freeman and Daisy Haggard Has been renewed for a second season um, Going back to the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League real quick There was another, um, some information that came out with Zack Snyder talking about You know, is this just like a director's cut? Is this just like extra stuff that we didn't see? And Zack Snyder, quote unquote, said it's going to be an entirely new thing, you know. And and I get that because I feel like a majority. Of, if he's got a four hour cut, the move, the theater movie we saw was only two hours exactly. So that's a double movie right there. And then half of his movie was reshot by Joss Whedon. So it is going to be an entirely new thing, and it just gets me that much more stoked to see how this is going to come out, man. So very very excited. About that uh, Fox has renewed a Prodigal Son For season 2 So very good news there ABC Everybody's been waiting to see What ABC was going to do With their show So are you ready? I'm going to break it down for you ABC has greenlit renewals For 8 of its scripted series 8 of them And that's going to include Blackish Thank you I'm happy about that the Police Procedural, The Rookie, as well, along with new seasons of American Housewife, which has been picked up for a fifth season. I like American Housewife. Uh, Blackish, like I said, for a seventh season. And its uh, spin off show, Mixed Dish, will be returning for a sophomore outing. The Connors coming back for a third season. The Goldbergs coming back for an eighth season. I love the Goldbergs, so very happy about that. A Million Little Things and The Rookie returning for their third seasons. Uh, and freshman drama Stumptown um, is returning for a second season as well So very, very cool Now unfortunately there's always cuts on the flip side of this And the show Bless This Mess starring Lake Bell and Dax Shepard has been cancelled uh, I did not get into that one The Goldberg spinoff Schooled has been cancelled Which that bums me out, I really like Schooled Along with Taryn Killam's show Single Parents Which I also really like, so that sucks and rookie mystery drama Emergence um, Which was led by Allison Tolman Has been cancelled I also really liked Emergence Now Emergence kind of to me Felt more like a one season kind of show So I'm not bummed by it not coming back But I am definitely bummed About Single Parents and Schooled I thought they were really funny good shows And it's a bummer that they are Moving away So there is your rundown for ABC we have the trailer for The Alienist, Angel of Darkness, so you can check that out. Uh, the second season featuring the return of Daniel Brühl. Uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World is set to return to theaters for its 10th anniversary, so very, very cool there. We also have the trailer for You Don't Know Me, Know Me, um, which is a documentary based on the movie Showgirls, from flop to cult classic, so check that out. Knives Out is set to stream exclusively on Amazon Prime coming in June The new VOD movie Capone with Tom Hardy directed by Josh Trank Has supposedly set a VOD record for its first week It made over $2.5 million just in VOD sales So congratulations to Capone Celebrities reflect on fan letters in a new Apple TV series called Dear So check that out, very interesting Mark Guggenheim 
is set to write a new Spider-Man universe heroine movie for Sony. That's right, and it's called Jackpot. I've never heard of the character Jackpot. I'm going to ask Friggins to tell me about it, but lately I've been striking blanks with Friggins because every time I ask him about a comic book, he replies and says, oh, I didn't read that one, and he's supposed to be my comic book guru. So, Friggins, I'm giving you another chance. I need to know about Jackpot. All right, so Mark Guggenheim will set, is set to write that movie for Sony. Chelsea Handler has set her first comedy special in six years over on HBO Max. So once again, building up that. MTV has set the Teen Wolf cast reunion uh, for a new digital series. So that's coming soon. Um, a biopic on Wuthering Heights author has cast Emma McKay. To star in it We got an interview with Jeffrey Wright Discussing the ongoing development of the Batman David E. Kelly boards Netflix's psychological thriller miniseries Anatomy of a Scandal Uh, Michael Bay is producing an adaptation of an audio novel called Armored Isai Morales is joining Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible 7 and 8 This is also a replacement um, for... Nicholas Holt Nicholas Holt had signed on to be a villain in this Which I thought was awesome And then I guess now because of COVID pushing things back There is scheduling problems So Nicholas Holt had to drop out And Isai Morales has jumped in Isai Morales is a great villain He just played Deathstroke in season 2 of Titans On the DC Universe app And he was fantastic And I could totally see this dude going real good Head to head with Tom Cruise So I like the sound of that a remake of Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead is in the works So that'll be an interesting one We have the second official trailer for Tenet Which is fantastic So check out that trailer And hopefully it'll still come out in July John Krasinski's new YouTube show That he's been doing for a while now Called Some Good News Has actually made a deal to come to CBS All Access So he's going to be doing it exclusively there Smart move Um Let's see here We have the trailer for The Outpost Starring Scott Eastwood and Orlando Bloom Um, A Little Mermaid comedy sequel series Is in the works Over on the Peacock streaming network 15 years later She's a miserable basic bitch That is the quote that I read you I'm not making that up But let me explain this show just a tad So This new Peacock series Which I'm still not even sure if it's going to be animated or live action But the forthcoming streaming service is developing a show called Washed Washed Up Which will be a sequel series that puts a comedic spin on the classic fairy tale turned Disney film Um, It's picking up 15 years after the original stories The single camera comedy, um, which makes it sound live action Finds the former mermaid now miserable, unmotivated, and in a loveless marriage And in other words, just a basic bitch human (laughs) According to the official description Uh, But when her father suddenly dies She suspects foul play And embarks on an epic adventure To save not only her underwater kingdom But all of humankind So there you go The series hails from Jane the Virgin writer Who will serve as a creator and executive producer um, On the project This I love the sound of this I love that they're taking this Disney movie And they're turning it into this Like crazy thing So Washed Up coming soon to Peacock Uh, Let's see here Yale Grabaglas Is set to star in a new HBO Max comedy From the Jane the Virgin boss That's right it's called Here She Lies Um, We already talked about all this FX has officially renewed What We Do in the Shadows For season 3 I told you guys on last week's episode That I just got into this show And I'm almost done with season 1 I love this show, I can't wait to get into season 2 And this news made me very excited To see it coming back for season 3 already It's so funny It's such a good show If you have Hulu, check it out If you have FX, check check it out The episode I watched on season 1 last night Had so many cameos From Dave Bautista to Wesley Snipes To Paul Rubens uh, Tilda Swinton I mean there was so many people that popped up On this episode last night It was awesome and it just goes to show you um, What good writing can do Taika Waititi, everybody So Love the show, congratulations Cena coming back for season 3 We have an article with uh, Paul Feig Talking about the development of Universal's Dark Army So check that out Congratulations to Final Fantasy 7 The remake has set a franchise record And also took the record of April 2020's Best selling video game 
Netflix's new animated film The Willoughbys has been watched by 37.6 million people In its first month So pretty great for a little family film Spyglass Pictures is adapting Ben Moon's memoir Into a film with Charlie Hunnam set to star And it will be called Denali Netflix has renewed Elite for a fourth season And will be switching the cast up Adult Swim has revived the adult animated series Tuca and Birdie for a second season Um, We have everything coming to HBO Max in June So check that out David Tennant and Michael Sheen are set to reunite In a new BBC lockdown comedy called Staged The Avatar sequels are set to resume production next week in New Zealand So very, very cool there, glad to see that going Zack Snyder is already working on a trailer for the HBO Max Justice League version So I love that, give me that Paul Feig says he's also ready to unleash his 3.5 hour director's cut of Ghostbusters I don't know if we need that, but hey, maybe that'll be another HBO Max thing, who knows Uh, Just a reminder that Studio Ghibli's Legendary Library is coming to HBO Max on its launch date I know a lot of people are excited about that John Stewart's upcoming comedy film Irresistible with Steve Carell um, is co- is actually going to be switching from theaters to VOD directly. So just another update there. The uh, we have an article up with unaired season finales talking about what would have happened on a lot of your favorite shows if they would have actually gotten to air their normal season finales before COVID cut that stuff off. Um, HBO Max's new Looney Tunes cartoons episode Debuts ahead of launch So you can watch the first episode today We got an article up with Ronald D. Moore Who opens up about the George Lucas Scrapped Star Wars series That was in production around 2004 Pretty interesting read to find out about that Um, We have a whole article up Talking about uh, new broadcast shows The streaming shows Everything alongside HBO Max's Premiere on Wednesday Very very cool article that kind of wraps up When all these new shows are starting So check that out And we got an article up with All of the beloved classics and fan favorite Live action titles that are coming to Disney Plus next month And that my friends Is the news of the week So thank you so much for tuning in for that We're about 40 minutes in And we got through a lot So thank you once again for tuning in Thank you for spending your time on this Memorial Day Or whenever you decide to listen to this I just thank you for your time for listening Because it always means a lot Uh, Let's wrap this baby up Let's do some shout outs Our official webpage is amiontheair.com We're available on Facebook Give us a like It's facebook.com slash amiontheair Follow us on Twitter at amiontheair You can follow me on Twitter directly at dxdonmega Make sure you follow me on Stardust At simplydonmega D-O-N-M-E-G-A I will give you a follow back We are available on YouTube and Instagram as well Just follow Am I on the Air We, you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcast Apple Podcast, give us a 5 star review It's going down If Apple's not your thing, don't you worry We're on Spotify, iHeartRadio Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, Podchaser Google Play, Google Play Podcast Uh, We're all over the interwebs You can find us pretty damn easily And of course, always at our great affiliates At reddragonsradio.com That's reddragonsradio.com Give them a follow on Twitter as well At reddragonsradio And that, my friends, does it for me On this Monday, May the 25th Memorial Day Um, Next time we talk, it'll be June Can't believe it June, June, June I hope all of you are staying happy, healthy, safe Um, Take it easy out there Continue to wash your hands Don't touch your face (laughs) You know, I hope you all can find some sanitizer And some paper towels and some toilet paper At this point Um, And uh, you know, we're just, you're staying good Calm and collected Um, Stay healthy, take care of yourselves And each other Get HBO Max on Wednesday And until next time y'all Peace Bye everybody Red Dragon